You know, I've been investing almost 20 years. I learned about the stock market when I was in high school. I took an interest to it. You know, I started reading as many books on it as I could. You know, this is not financial advice. This is just what I do, you know. So a lot of people, they hit me up all the time. They know I invest in stocks. They hit me up asking me about, you know, how to get started. You know, what's the best stocks to buy, this and that. So I try to get people game, you know. And I was thinking like, man, a lot of these people, you know, they get started investing in stocks. They may not know when it's a good time to take their profits. You know, me personally, when I uh, get about a 20% gain in my stocks, meaning if I buy a stock, let's say I buy a stock, a $10 stock, I buy 100 shares, right? That's a thousand dollars. If it goes up twenty percent, I usually try to lock in my profits right there. You know what I'm saying? Some people may be saying, you know, twenty percent. That's only two hundred dollars. But the thing with the stock market is, you have to think long term. It's not a place where you just gamble with your money. You're trying to make quick, easy, fast money. You know what I'm saying? A lot. I've seen this a lot. You know, especially when, uh, you know. They were passing out the stimulus checks. I remember this time, you know, it was like people, you know, all kind of people I was hearing, man, they was buying stocks. Everybody was like, oh, I'm going to use my stimulus check to buy stocks, which is good. You know what I'm saying? I, I highly encourage anybody, you know, to get into the stock market, you know, just because of the fact that you can grow your wealth. You could, you know, expand your portfolio and whatnot. But, you know, it was like, when the stock market, the stock market was going up, everybody's happy, everybody's buying, everybody, you got their grandma, your auntie, your cousin, every the taxi driver, the damn custodian, the uh, cafeteria lady, everybody's talking about the stock market. Everybody's good and happy when it's going up, but this is what happens next. It goes down. You know, I remember a prime example too was COVID. When COVID hit, the stock market crashed. You know, a lot of people panic. You know, that's the thing when a lot of people, when they start investing in stocks, right? They start buying stocks and then it's like they lose some money or they lose a little bit of money and it's like they throw the towel and they're like, oh, no, nah, I'm not losing no money. Let me get my money out, man. Put it back in the bank account, man. That's backwards thinking. You know, I might make a video on that here at a later date, man. But yeah, when it comes to profit, I try to lock in my profits around 20%. You know what I'm saying? I just had a great prime example of this the other day, earlier this uh, last week. When Pelantir stock, I think after their earnings report, it went up about maybe 10, no, it went up about 14%, right? I had been buying this stock for a couple years back when it was $18. It's currently like $55 the last time I checked, you know, so I probably had, I had hundreds of shares in this stock, right? And I waited for it to hit that move. I waited for the earnings report. And when the earnings report hit, man, they reported good profits, good numbers. An earnings report is when a company, they do it every three months. They tell you how the business is doing. You know, you're not just buying a stock, you're buying a business. You know, so they're telling you what the numbers was like, how much profit they made, you know, what their forecast for the next three, six, uh, nine, 12 months is looking like, you know, so they had a good earnings report. The stock shot up. I took my profit off the table. I sold probably 50, 60 shares and I locked in my profit right there. This is the thing when it comes to the stock market, you know, you buying stocks, yes, but it's not a profit until you actually sell your stock for a gain and lock it in. You know, a lot of people don't know that. They just think that they could buy the stock, but they, like I said, they don't know when to sell. So for me personally, I sell when I get to, like I said, 20%. When one of my stocks that I'm buying in my portfolio hits 20%, boom, I'm snatching my profit. And a lot of these apps, you know, whether you use Cash App, I use Cash App. I have a personal account with E-Trade. My daughter's uh, college fund, I got her one. I buy stocks for her with Charles Schwab. You know what I'm saying? All of them are about the same. And a lot of them, they have what's like a gains loss report. You know, you can see next to your stocks, whatever stocks you buy, right? And it'll show you how much percentage your stocks are up. So, you know, I got stocks, some stocks I may have up like 40%, 50, 60%. You know, I'm holding them for the long term. I, I kind of let them ride. You know, I'll sell some here and there. But, you know, what? like I said, the main point I'm trying to make though with a majority of my stocks you know, if I'm buying, I'm accumulating. When I hit 20%, that's my sale point right there. And I sell just enough to get my profit out, right? Once you get your profit out, you know me, I leave the rest of my stocks in. I let them ride. 
You know what I'm saying? I made, let's say for instance, with Pelintair. You know, it's $55 right now. I still have a, a good amount of shares still invested. So I may not sell again until it appreciates another 20% or I said maybe if it gets to $75 a share, I may not sell another stock until that point is reached. You know what I'm saying? Boom, you sold the stock, now what? You know, you sit on the profit, you still got some more uh, stocks invested in the stock, you letting them ride, you know, you playing with some of the house's money, you got your profit, what do you do with your profit? Me personally, I look at my portfolio or I look at my watch list of stocks that I may want to buy, you know, at some point, and that's what I do with a lot of my money. I take the profit and I try to reinvest it in something. I'm not being done with the money. You know what I'm saying? It's your money. You can do what you choose to do with it. Me, I try to keep my portfolio growing as much as possible. So I take that money and I look at other stocks in my portfolio. And I'm trying to look at stocks that may be down. If a stock that I still like, I've done my research on, you know, I've done my homework on, I feel still, I still feel like it's a winner. If it's down, that's where I'm a majority of my, my money that I took from that profit, I'm going to put in that stock. So this is what I did, right? When I sold that Pelantir, you know, I took a lot of that and I flipped it into NVIDIA. You know, I'm with NVIDIA. I'm waiting on their earnings report later on this month. You know, I think they're going to have a good earnings report. You know, they're doing a lot of good things with AI. So I've been piling a lot of money into that. And my, my goal with that is when it pop, if it does pop like I think it can pop, boom, I'm going to take my profit. I've been buying shares on Pump Shares on NVIDIA. I'm going to take that profit and I'm going to put it in something else. That's how you grow your portfolio. And like I said earlier, when I used that example, you know, let's say you bought a $10 stock and you bought 100 shares, $1,000 you put in and you, you, you sell at 20%. That's only $200. You may be thinking, that's not a lot of money, you know. But like I say, the stock market, it's a long-term game. It's a long-term endeavor. You have to be patient. You have to be consistent with putting money in and investing as much money into it as you can. Boom. Once you do that, you know, a year, two, five, ten years from now, now you playing with some serious paper. You got your money. Now, you know, instead of you buying a thousand dollars worth of shares, you know, of a company. Now you may be buying 5,000, 10,000, that 200 profit, you know, now it's turning into $2,000, five, $10,000, 20, 15, you know what I'm saying? That's the goal. When you invest in the long run, you have to grow your portfolio with time. You have to keep adding money to it. That's how the game goes. You know, like I said, it's not some, uh, get rich quick scheme. It's not the casino, this and that. You know what I'm saying? Some people, they get into it thinking it's like, okay, I'm going to uh, uh, trade this stock, man, because I hear everybody talking about it, and they don't do any homework or research on what they're buying. Don't never go into a stock without doing your research on it. Just because you heard your uncle tell you that, oh, this stock is good. Uh, you heard somebody when you was on the uh, the bus, the train ride, the work, say, oh, yeah, you should buy this stock, man. Everybody's talking about it, man. I never buy a stock without doing my homework on them. I'm looking at, you know, the products they make, how much earnings their, you know, their uh, company is bringing, how much revenue they're bringing in, you know, how much their stock has went up over the years. You know, you got to do all your due diligence before you just buy a stock, man. I always, I highly encourage you, you know, even if you're a beginner, intermediate, you've been doing it, you already know this, man, I'm just sending this out. As a reminder, man, never buy something without doing your homework on the stock, man. It's just like you going to the casino, you sitting at the blackjack table, and you just gambling your money away. You know what I'm saying? You may not. I've seen this as a prime example. Man, I had a college teammate I played football with, right? And he had he was fortunate enough to get into Neo stock. Neo was a, a EV maker. They make electric vehicles. He got in when it was like $3 a share. I remember he was telling me this, man. We was uh, talking on the DM on Instagram, and he was like, up. Oh. He was up, man. Like, at the, the, at the time, Neo, it got up to like $70 a share, and he said he didn't hardly sell none of his shares. He was probably up like a 1,000%, man. That's like astronomical returns. And what ended up happening was he held on to his profits. He didn't sell so he didn't technically lock in the profit. Like I say, it's not a profit until you actually sell the stock 
and you have the money sitting in your brokerage account or your bank account. He rolled it from $3, from $3 all the way up to 70, all the way back down to damn near like, I think he said he was down to like maybe $7 before he finally sold some shares. He was up, he told me he was up like damn near like a hundred and some thousand dollars in Neo stock and he rolled it all the way up all the way down. So that's why I made this video, man, you know, so you kind of got a good idea of when you should take your profits, man. You never, you never can go wrong taking your profits. You know, nobody ever cried or lost money taking their profits, man. So like I said, when your stocks that you buying, you know, you look at that chart, the gains and losses percentage, man, you see it's up a certain amount, you know, it's different for everybody. You know, it may be different for you. You may just want to get five to 10%. You know, you may be a little more riskier. You know, sometimes like me, I have a, a appetite for risk. You know, I do calculator risk though. So, like I said, when the stock market crashes, I'm like a kid in the candy store. My eyes light up because I'm like, damn, I could buy all these stocks on sale. All my stocks, you know, like I said, during COVID, the stock market crashed. I'm talking about Bam, you had stocks that might have been $150 a share. They might have dropped like the $30 a share. So I'm working as much overtime as I can, pulling as much money as I can to try to scoop up as many shares as I can on these stocks while they at a discount. You know what I'm saying? I, I use this analogy in another video I made about investing. It's just like, let's say you you like Apple, you like iPhones, or you like uh you like Jordans, the sneaker Jordans by Michael Jordan. It's just like you going into Foot Locker or the Apple store and you see the newest iPhone out or the newest pair of retro Jordans and they mark down 20, 25%. That's unheard of. You would never see that happen. That's how you got to treat stocks when the stock market dips or it crashes, man. Use that as an opportunity to buy as much of the stocks that you like as possible. That's what I do. And I remember when COVID hit, they crashed. I rolled them all the way back up, man. Made massive profits. Uh, a few years ago when Facebook dropped, man, they had some bad news happen. And I think Facebook stock at the time was like $300 a share. It dipped all the way down to like $90 a share. So, you know, that was like an 80% uh, loss in the stock, man. That's like one of the biggest stock losses in history, right? So I still knew in my head that, you know, Facebook is a great company. Everybody and their grandma uses Instagram, Facebook, uh, WhatsApp. Those are all companies that Facebook owns. You know what I'm saying? Meta, I'm sorry. So once they dropped the 90, I was like, oh, nah, I got to back the truck up, man. I started selling some of my other stocks you know, and I put as much money as I could onto Facebook stock, right? And what happened? Man, I rolled that all the way up to like, I saw, I finally started selling my shares at like maybe 220. I sold them in little batches as it would go up, but I finally sold the last remaining bit of my shares at like $250. So I rolled the stock from $90 all the way back up to $250, man. That's massive gains. That's how you do it. You know what I'm saying? I try to keep this as simple as possible. You know, I'm going to make another video too. I might make one and drop it tomorrow talking about, you know, how to find stocks, you know, to invest in. You know, what companies, I, I get a lot of people, you know, when they're new to invest and they ask me like, yo, what stock should I buy? Uh, you know, stuff like that. So I'm a, I might do a follow-up video on that, man. But yeah, that's the basis of this video, man. You know, when to take your profits. You got to find your sweet spot. For me, it's 20%. Sometimes it could be a little bit higher, you know, if I'm a little more bullish and long-term on a stock and, you know, I want to hold it for the long term. I may, and I, and I feel like it's a good company. They make a great product and I think they're, the sky's the limit for them going forward in the future. I may let it ride a little higher. You know, I may take my profits when it hits 25, 30%. But like I said, I try to stick in that range. I won't go, you know, 15 to maybe 30%. I got to take some profit off the table. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's not a profit until you actually sell and take the gains off the table and put them on your table. Y'all like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok. Got the ghetto body, but I got the merchandise for sale. This is one of my uh, gym shirts right here. No pain, just gain. I got a lot of hoodies, t-shirts on my website for sale. Check me out, man. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's the basics, man. You know, as far as taking your profits, man. Y'all got any input, any thoughts, any comments, any advice or tips? 
you know, if you invest in stocks that you can add to this video because I'm all about trying to give people something of value with these videos, you know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to build a community over here, you know? So, you know, if I could pick your brain, you could pick my brain. You've been investing in stocks for years. You know what I'm saying? We just, we want to be a community over here and we want to help people learn the game so we can all get wealthy together. You know, we may all be at different stages, you know, which is cool, you know? You just got to help each other out, you know, with these videos. If I can help somebody out with this video, I'll make them every day.